Welcome to the television ministry of King David Baptist Church, 2329 North King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana, under the leadership of Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr., a church that's warm, friendly, and our doors are always open and welcoming. King David Baptist Church. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. We have come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Father God, we come at this hour to say thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Another opportunity that we're able to come together as a body of believers to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, to the end that you would get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen, 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 amen. The book of Joshua, chapter 24, beginning at verse number 14 and verse number 15. Joshua, chapter 24, beginning at verse number 14 through verse 15. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We'll talk about fathers stand up. Fathers stand up. Joshua had begun his ministry. Moses, the servant, was dead. And he began to rehearse within their ears that when you go into the land that God had given unto you, that if you meditate upon his word both day and night, that wherever you do, you should have good success. But even in all of these things, they were into the promised land. He began to remind them of the things where God had brought them from. He gathered them together. He gathered the priests. He gathered the elders, the judges, those that were the head, the officers. And all of those came together. And he began to rehearse within them the things that God has for them, what God had done for them. He wanted them to remember what God had brought them for. And we as fathers have to be willing to take a stand. And that's what God is telling us. When the men of God, when the man of God takes a stand, it makes a difference in the household. It makes a difference in the church. It makes a difference in the family. And when Cornelius was saved, his whole household was saved when the man began to take a, a stand. And God, the word of God is still the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. It has not changed. When the man takes their rightful places, when the man take their rightful places in the home, when they take their rightful places in the community, it will be a difference. It will be the difference. He have made the man the head of the household, and he asked that the wife, and the women would be submissive unto their own husband. This is according to the word of God. The order have not changed. We have changed. God's word is still the same. And when we take our rightful places, when we take our stands, we're able to make a difference in the household. We make a difference with our children. We make a difference with our spouse. We make a difference on a job in the community as a whole when men take their rightful places. Fathers, God have called us as to be the head of the household. In the beginning, God gave Abraham a job before he gave him a wife. And he told him to name all of the animals. He still made a woman. He put man to sleep. And out of him came woman. And he said, whoa. This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman. And the two shall become one. The two shall become one. 
He gave man the charge. He gave man the responsibility to take care of the household, the father that he had. He gave it unto him. And everything that he gave, the command unto Abraham, unto Adam, excuse me, and he told Adam to not to eat off the tree. The day that you eat off it, you shall surely die. He gave that command to Adam, not to Eve. He gave it to Adam. But Adam, he had to be the teacher to teach his wife in order that she knew, because she already knew the command that God had given to her. So we know that Adam taught his wife. It is the man responsibility to teach his family, to teach his household, to teach his children, to teach his spouse the things that God would have them to do. Even in the scriptures, they say, let them learn at home whatever they need to learn. Let the husband begin to teach them. Not what pastor is saying, but this is according to the word of God, what the word of God has said. And let the word of God be our final authority. Our final authority. Fathers taking a stand. So he began to rehearse. Joshua began to rehearse in them, having them to remember what God had done for them. He remembered them. He gathered them together. And sometimes we got to remember where God had brought us from, what God had done in our lives. Because sometimes we forget what God had done for us. We forget where God had brought us from. We think that we have did it all on our own. But if it had not been for the Lord, none of these things would be possible. It's because of God we live, we move, and we have our being. It's dangerous. It's a dangerous to be in a position where we get so much prosperity that we forget where we've come from. It's nothing wrong with having things, but we can't let the things begin to have us. We got to remember that it is God that provided us with everything that we have. God provided us with the job. God provided us with the home. God provided us with our health and our strength. And it had not been for him. None of these things would be possible. So most of the time we forget when we get, when we get prosperity, when we get things that's going our way, we realize that it's all about us. It's all about us. It's what we have done and what we did. And we put God out of the equation but it's all about God. If it had not been for him, none of these things would be possible. So we got to put things in his perspective, realizing that it's all because of him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Put in God first. Put in God first. So he was rehearsing unto them, reminding them that it was the power of God that brought them out of Egypt. Nothing that they did on their own. But it was God that was right there with them through it all. That even when he told Pharaoh to let his people go, that he gave Moses what you have in your hand, a rod. And he took the rod and he parted the Red Sea. But it was God that parted the Red Sea and they went through on dry ground. And the same God that brought them through on dry ground, he allowed the water to overtake those that was coming after them. It was God. It was the power of God. And even while they were there in the wilderness, while they stayed there for 40 years, wandering through the wilderness, God still took care of them. He gave them shoes that never wore out, clothes that never wore out. He gave them water. He gave them food. God took care of them by the day as well as by the night. God was right there with them in the midst of it all. The power of God. Even in our own lives, we can look back and see where God has brought us from, and we can see the power of God that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? But we forget where we've come from. We think that we have arrived or we did things all on our own. If it had not been for God, none of these things will be. He asked them to remember the power of God. And not only remember the power of God, but we got to remember the presence of God, that God was right there with them. And we as believers, we got to know that God is with us. When we accept the Lord as our personal Savior, he promised us that he will never leave us, nor would he forsake us, but that he will be right there with us. So he was with them in the wilderness. He had brought them to this very point into the land where they were flowing with milk and honey. 
that they was in the land that they was getting where they didn't even have to build on their own. God was giving them everything, but they got complacent with the God. And sometimes we allow, when we get complacent, when we forget where we come from, we allow things to creep in. We allow the world, but we cannot serve two masters. We have to make a choice. We got to be fully committed either to God or to the world. Either going to serve God or you're going to serve the world. You can't serve two masters. Even in the scripture, say you're going to either love one or you're going to hate the others. And the scripture says for us today that we got to choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Fathers, are you willing to step up and serve God and God alone? God wants us to fully commit, fully surrender to him and him alone. No other one. It's time that we take our rightful places. Too many of us are doing the things that's of the world and not serving God. But if God has been good to you, if God have done anything, it shouldn't be too hard for you to make a decision on whom you're going to serve. If God be God, then serve him. But if the, if the God on the other side, if that's your God, then serve him. But you got to make a choice who you're going to serve. Elijah told them they got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. They built a fire. And if, if your God be God, if you can call down fire to come down, serve him. And they call upon him all day and all night. Maybe your God is on a journey. Maybe your God is asleep. Call him a little louder. And they call upon him, but he didn't answer. But Elijah called upon the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The same God that we serve, the God that we can call upon in the midnight hour, the God that we can call on any time, any place and anywhere. And he is always right there to hear us when we're going through. And he called upon him and fire came down and consumed up the altar. And that's the same God that we serve even today. We got to make a choice of whom we're going to serve, no matter what we go through that it is going to be God and God alone. I don't care how dark it get. I don't care how small it get. that I'm going to serve God and God alone. Not people and not things, but God. Fathers, we need you to step up to the plate and make a decision and make a choice that God is going to be God and God alone. Too many of us are serving other gods and it's affecting not only us, but it's affecting the whole family. It's affecting the church is affecting the family as a whole. But when we take our rightful places in the homes, when we take our rightful places in the church, when we take our rightful places in the community, it will make a difference. God is looking for us. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He's looking for the righteous to take a stand. We're the one that will be able to make a difference in this world. Too much is going on. We're losing our children because we have mothers, single mothers, raising their children. Fathers, we need to step up to the plate. Fathers, we need to step up and be what God have us to be. The head, the provider. The court shouldn't have to force you to provide for your children. You should be willing to do it no matter what because you brought them into this world. God has still in order that the family, the mother and the wife would the husband and the wife would come together and rear up the children and bring them together. The same order that God has. We have gotten out of order. And it's now for the fathers. You got to take a stand. Are you willing to stand up? Make a choice. Choose ye whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, Joshua said that we're going to serve the Lord. So he was having them to remember the presence of God. He was right there with them. He's having them to remember the power of God, that it was God that brought you over. It was God that delivered you. And not only that, but look, he says that God is going to give you the land which you did not labor and cities you did not build. And you dwell in them, vineyards and olive yards, which you did not plant, but yet you're still going to eat. That's nobody but God. God is going to provide for us things that we don't even deserve. We are living under God's grace, God's unmerited favor. It's nobody but God's grace that he has given us things that we don't even deserve. 
We got the victory. We got the power of God to live in the victory when we are walking after the blessings of God, when we serve God and God alone. That you got the victory, my brother. You got the power of God in your life when you begin to serve him and him alone. That he was giving them land that they didn't even labor for. Cities that they didn't even build. God, he gave us things that we don't even deserve. He woke us up this morning. He gave us food, health, favor on our jobs, favor in our homes, favor in a community. That was nobody but God, by the grace of God. Because if we be honest with all of ourselves, we all deserve death. Because none of us have kept all of God's commandments. There is none perfect, no, not one. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thanks be unto God that is able. He paid the price for us. And he died for all of our sins. And he loved us so much that he looked beyond our faults and he still see our needs. Thank God I serve a great God. I serve a great Savior that keeps on blessing me over and over and over and over again. I'm not all perfect. I've sinned. I've come short of the glory of God. But God's still been good to me. And because of his goodness, that should be enough that we should be able to praise God and make a decision that we're going to serve God and God alone. Because the God that we serve, he is a jealous God and he will not have no other gods before him. He wants us to serve him and him alone. So we got a decision to make. If you're going to serve God, then serve him and him alone. But if you're going to serve the other gods, the other gods serve them and them alone. Whom are you going to serve? He says, now therefore, he wants you to fear the Lord. Fear him. And the fear is not being afraid, but the fear that we have is reverencing God. Now that we see the power of God, now that we see the presence of God, now that we see the provision of God, he said, now therefore, my brother, you ought to fear God. You ought to serve him and him alone. The beginning of the wisdom of God, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. When you begin to reverence God for who he is, we worship him, we serve him for who he is. That even if God does nothing else for us, he has done enough. God is still a deliverer. He's still a healer. He's still got everything in the palm of his hand. But if he don't bless us with it, God has still done enough for us, but he's still able to do it. He's still God. He's still God. He's still able to provide our every need according to his riches in glory. He's still able to heal. But even if he don't heal, he's still a healer. He's still able to deliver. But even if he don't deliver, he's still a deliverer. He's still a bridge over troubled waters. He's still a doctor in a sick room. He's still a lawyer in a courtroom. He's still a friend that sticks closer than any brother. He'll be all that we need him to be. God is just God. He's an all-knowing God. He's an all-powerful God. He's a God that changes not. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he wants us to serve him wholeheartedly. Be loyal, be faithful unto God. Give God the best of your service. He is looking for fathers, mothers, children to step up to the plate and be what God would have you to be. But as for me and my house, he said that we're going to serve the Lord. So he's asking them, fear the Lord. And not only he says to fear the Lord, but he said to serve him in sincerity and in truth. Sincerity. Be sincere. If you're going to do it, be sincere. If you're not going to do it, don't do it at all. If your love is not there, if you can't give God the best, don't do it at all. It's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it. If you're not going to be faithful going in it, you made a vow before God that I'm going to love you for better, 
for worse, for sickness, and in health, until death do us part. And if you're not going to be faithful and committed to that vow, then don't do it. Don't do it just to do it. If you say you love them, you love them faithfully, committed unto them until the end. And that's the way we should be with God. If we're going to serve God, we should serve him wholeheartedly, sincerely. Because if the love is not there, it means nothing. If I give my body to be burned, and don't have the love, it means nothing. You got to love God. Love him how? Love the Lord with all of thy heart, all of thy mind, all of thy soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. The love that God has for us. God wants us to love one another. Love in sincerity, and then he said in truth. We worship God in spirit and in truth. That word is truth, and we got to know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. And how do we know the word? We got to study the word of God. We got to know the word of God. And when we know the word of God, we're able to worship him in sincerity and in truth. So you want us to fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. And then he wants us to put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. There are some things that God is asking us to put away. Put away the malice. Put away the lying. Put away the backbiting. Put away the adultery. Put away the fornication. Put away the stealing. Put away all these things away. God wants you to put these things away. Anything you put before God, it becomes your little G-O-D. But he wants you to put all of these things away and serve God and God alone. Fear God. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the little gods. Put them away. Choose you this day and serve ye the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. You're not serving man. You're not serving the pastor. You're serving God. God have saved you. God have delivered you. God have kept you. Not man. So you de he deserving of everything. And to be a servant, that means that somebody got to be your master. And either the world is your master or God is your master. But whatever you find yourself a slave to, that's your master. Whatever you do. Some people got alcohol. Some people got drugs. Some people is their job. Some people is their spouse. Some people is their children. Some people are masters to different things, but God wants to be our masters. The things that we have, who gave it to us? God. But he didn't want us to have control over us. No one should have control over us but God himself. Not my will, Lord, but let thy will be done. I don't want to do my will, but I want to do what is pleasing in the sight of God. I want God's will to be done in my life. That I'm doing what he wants me to do. And when we're doing God's will, we serve in him and him alone. So we got a choice to make. We got to fear God. We got to serve him in sincerity and in truth. Then he's asking us to put away these small gods. Put away these things that we have put before God and serve God and in God alone. And if it's seen evil for you to serve the Lord. If it seemed evil for you to serve the Lord, God's done too much for you not to serve him. If you look back over your life, if you don't forget where you have come from, if you realize who I brought you this for, it's not hard serving God. It's easy for us to say, Lord, I'm going to serve you. It's easy for us to say with our mouth. But he's not looking at the mouth. He wants our hearts to be right. We got a choice to make. And it takes a made up mind. You got to make up your mind. And I got a made up mind that I'm going to serve the Lord and the Lord all by himself. Somebody say that if it means that I got to walk alone. If it means that I got to suffer, I'm willing to suffer. My mind is made up 
that I'm going to serve God and God alone. So if it seemed evil for you, after all that the Lord have done, if it seemed evil for you, he says for you to choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. If it's evil for you to give your life to God, if it seemed evil for you to serve him and him alone, then I want you to choose. I want you to make a choice. Because you can't have it both ways. You can't be in the world and trying to serve God too. You can't serve two masters. So you got to make a choice. But for this, I'm looking for you to serve God. And God a God alone. So if it seems evil, let me bring things back to your remembrance. Who saved you from the pits of hell? You were on your way to H-E-L-L. -L. And I want you to know that you didn't find yourself. But the Lord came just where you were. And the Lord accepted you just as you were. You were a wretch undone. But it was nobody but God that made a difference in my life. And oh, what a change that have come over me. Because I was on my way to hell. But one day, one day, he came and he changed my life. And the change came that I believe that God sent his only son into this world to die for my sins. I believe that he was born of a virgin Mary. I believe that he hung there on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. I believe that they took a spear and they put it in his side. And out of it came blood and water. And what was able to wash away my sins? It was nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. What can make me whole again? It was nothing but the blood. And I want you to know that the blood still works. The blood still got power to make a change in your life. The blood, it washed not some of my sins, but it washed away all of my sins. And thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. And what can wash away my sins is nothing but the blood. And the blood still works. The blood still got power. It got power to heal. It got power to deliver. And he washed away every last one of our sins. And the only sin that Christ would not forgive is the sin of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. But every other sin, he has paid the price. And you know what? He remembers them no more. Thank you for viewing today's service of the King David Baptist Church, located at 2329 North King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana, under the leadership of Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr. Pastor Wallace and the members and congregation invite you to join them for service starting each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Until next time, we thank you for viewing and have a great weekend.